My first guest is fondly known as FRC's resident historian. Dr. Keenan Curitan was a pastor for 20 years, and he is the author of Lost Episodes in American History, a curriculum for teaching about America's Christian heritage. He's here tonight to reflect on our long history of gratitude and how important it is to a country facing difficult times like ours. Dr. Curitan, welcome to Pray, Vote, Stand. Tony, it's a pleasure. You know, we started with Thanksgiving, and, and, you know, I think it's significant. This is the 400th anniversary of the first Thanksgiving. Those pilgrims had every reason to co complain, to murmur, to pack up and go home, but thank God they didn't. Amen, Tony. I, you know, you, you look at their history from the very beginning when they were rant, uh, hounded, harassed by the government, surveilled by the government, uh, thrown in jail uh, by King James and his men, had their property confiscated and were ran out of England uh, because of their beliefs. And, uh, you know, if that weren't enough, then they get to Holland and uh, they are breaking their backs with hard labor for about 11 and a half years. They begin to lose their kids to the culture and the loose living there. And so the pastor, uh, John Robinson, got a vision for taking the gospel to America. And basically they saw themselves almost like uh, the people of Israel, uh, but going to the new world from the old uh, as their exodus and uh, time in the wilderness out there and hopefully a promised land uh, when they got here. But when they got here, uh, they, they got here at a bad time. They sailed, of course, across uh, stormy seas, the worst possible time to travel. Uh, the English uh, sailors called them psalm singing puke stockings because they would sing psalms of praise to God and thanks to God and then puke in their stockings because they were seasick. But even in the midst of that hardship of the journey coming over here, 66 days on that boat, they were still thankful and grateful to God and sang praises to God. Then when they got here, of course, it was nearly winter. They didn't break ground on their first building, which served as a, kind of a meeting house slash a church, a church gathering place and fort uh, until Christmas Day. And so, as you, you pointed out, you know, they were exposed to the elements. They got sick and their sickness, of course, led to pneumonia and their pneumonia, of course, led to death. And uh, as Bradford puts it in his book, uh, you know, it was two or three day, a day. Right. They were dying in January and February. And uh, th at, at the height of the winter, their daily rations were one or two kernels of corn. So certainly uh, they faced dire situations. But then, you know, when it uh, came time that next fall, the Lord had blessed them with a, a, a bountiful crop. And uh, the Indians had shown them how to, to raise crops more effectively, and they were thankful. And, and, and looking at that, and looking at their history, and looking at the history of the nation, you know, I see intertwined with success is gratitude, even in the midst of difficulty. And, and could it be, you know, as the Apostle Paul was telling the, the uh, believers at Thessalonica, that it is a grateful heart that sustains us, and that's why God has called us to be grateful even in difficult circumstances. Absolutely, you know, trial and thanksgiving are inseparably linked when it comes to thanksgiving. Uh, you know, how could you be thankful after losing half your people to death in, you know, the winter months and then coming into the spring with no food having to rely, of course, on Squanto, who was a special instrument sent from God, said Bradford, uh, for basically their deliverance and helping them learn how to do the things they needed to do to survive. And then God blessing them with that great harvest. What could they do other than thank God and praise God for what he did? You know, it's kind of interesting when you look back at that first celebration, uh, you know, I'm a recovering preacher, so there's four Fs. There, there, there was feasting, right? They had, they had deer that the enemy, that the Indians had killed. Uh, they had uh, turkeys that they killed, geese and uh, ducks. They had berry, basically what's the early equivalent of berry pies and uh, other vegetables and, and things. So they, they feasted for three days, but they also had fun. They had games, uh, wrestling matches and so forth. 
uh, with the Indians. And uh, then they had firearms. I know you'll appreciate that. They had firearms. Uh, Miles Standish uh, you know, had them march in a parade. That was the very first Thanksgiving parade, but it was a military parade. And they, uh, they shot off their firearms. And then they, instead of Santa at the end of the parade as the showstopper, they fired the cannon at the end, which uh, made an impression on the Indians. But then fourthly, there was faith. You know, Elder William Brewster, the mission pastor, would have led them to thank God before they took a bite of that feast. And so you had all those elements at work uh, in that first Thanksgiving that really, I think, give us a basis for some of the things that we do today. Well, I certainly hope that uh, I have venison for Thanksgiving because I'm going deer hunting next week, so I hope I get that deer. But I, I want you to stop your recovery for just a moment and go back to uh, putting on your pastor hat. Because I want to ask you, we talked about the New Testament, Paul speaks about Thanksgiving, but it's not limited uh, from the start to finish, uh, from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, we, we see the importance placed on Thanksgiving, uh, a thankful, grateful heart. Yes. What should we as believers be doing right now in the midst of, you know, tumultuous, disappointing, discouraging times? You know, I think it's good to reflect. I think it's good to, to go back and, and uh, you know, take an assessment of the, of the past year. Yeah, there's been setbacks. I mean, you and I both over the past year have had COVID. Uh, we've had a lot of people in our lives who've been impacted by that. But then there also have been many blessings. You and I both have become grandparents over the past year. And what a blessing it is to welcome a grandson, right? Uh, and we welcomed a granddaughter and soon to have another grandson. There are so many things that we go back and just make a list of the things that God has done to bless us this year. Uh, you know, I think we'll be astounded when we look back on it. There's so much that we can be grateful for. And, you know, the psalmist call, calls us to do that over and over again, to give thanks to the Lord uh, for he is good. His mercies endure forever. Yeah, being thankful doesn't mean you bury your head in the sand and ignore what's going on. It's being thankful even in the midst of the trials and tribulations, knowing that God is going to be faithful. Just as the pilgrims, they had faith. Just reading, you know, in our Bible reading uh, plan as we're in uh, Hebrews, you know, faith is the, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, we just, it is, uh, we know it's there and even in the midst of those difficulties. So, Dr. Curitan, I'm going to ask you to, to close us uh, in this segment with a prayer. If you just pray uh, that each of us would pause and allow the Holy Spirit to cultivate a spirit of thanksgiving uh, in us, not just in this season, but really as a way of life. Absolutely. I'd be happy to, Tony. Let's pray. Father, we just uh, we bow before you, Father, and we praise your name as our providential provider, our gracious sustainer. Lord, you're the giver of all good things. You say that your word says every good and perfect gift comes from above. And so Lord, uh, we thank you that you call, cause the rain to fall and the sun to shine and bring forth fruit from the earth for all of us to enjoy. So God, I just pray that you'd help us to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Lord, help us not be like the nine who were healed by Jesus of leprosy and went away. But help us to be like that thankful one who came back and thanked Jesus. God, help us to cultivate that attitude of gratitude, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Curitan.